it's so soft. Mm -hmm. When you think about foundations for houses in here, or buildings of any description, you've got to think about what you're building them on, mm -hmm. and and how how safe that would be. So, in other words, if you load a slope, can that slope fail just because it gets wet? Okay. Uh, and even worse, if we get a small earthquake, or even a large earthquake. We were made aware of the situation over the weekend. Officer was here on Monday to issue a cease work notice on the clearing of the land and we come here this morning to ensure that those, the notices were complied with. Currently, the permit is still being processed at, processed at our office. So what, what, what's taking place now is the creating of an access road to enter the top of the property. After we had issued the cease work notice, the developer reached out to us to indicate that he wanted to access the property to do a borehole test to so that they could finalize the engineer design. But uh, no approval was given for any development at this current location. So the, the, the collapse of the road or the landslide was caused while the, because of the cutting of the access road? Yes, the cutting of the access road, the debris from the cutting of the access road would have rolled down to the roadside and caused the road to be impossible. Professor Simon Mitchell, uh, Professor of Sedimentary Geology. I do loads of other things, mapping and things like that as well. Okay. Uh, the Department of Geography and Geology at UWI. You see they should have put a retaining wall in before they did things. This is, this is part of the problem with actually doing this. Um, and, and you can see that the, the, the rocks down there are actually the same sort of thing, the same sort of soils. These, these are weathered granitoid rocks, these, these sort of things coming down here. Um, and this whole area is going to be built like this. So you can actually see the whole slope here is made out of these sorts of rocks. So all of this is potentially landslide material. Um, the trouble is that, that these rocks, there's two problems with these rocks. Number one, that this is a big fault zone. So with these rocks, they're faulted, they're broken up, they're um, sheared up, so that they're, they're initially weak. Then, because we live in the tropics, and you've got hot weather and you've got rainfall, what happens is the minerals in these get changed to clays. And so the whole lot becomes unstable. And so what you have is an unstable slope. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as you cut into that slope, what you end up with is failures. And those failures are what is going to be the problem. So in other words, if you cut a road into these sort of things, this stuff will fail. And that's it. Um, and the only way you can prevent that to happening is either put in retaining walls or what often happens is natural vegetation comes on top but the natural vegetation will only develop over time and if it's steep it won't actually develop at all because it'll keep falling down. But in a case of doing the development they usually remove all these vegetations, trees, everything. Well as soon as you remove that then your, your slopes become unstable. So as soon as they become unstable, they're going to actually slide down. So you're saying that um, they should have built the retaining wall. Retaining wall should first. be done first. First, okay. if you're going to go in and go do something like this, you should look at you should look at where you're going to put your roadways, where you're going to put your um, construction, and you must put in your retaining walls to actually stop things failing. Okay. This is put in as a second. Thing. They didn't think they had to do this. Probably they didn't have cost for this because they didn't think they had to do it. Okay. And that's part of the problem is, is that you're, you're just assuming you've got a bit of land you can build on and you're not thinking about how stable is that land. And you've got to be looking at that land in terms of stability. And if it's going to fail, you've got problems. Okay. Not just for you, but for the people around you. I don't know how well this retaining wall is anchored into the foot beneath. You see, I mean, have they piled it? Or is this just on the natural view of the bike? Because if not, then, then this, this, this whole thing, is, even it's got steel in it, it's still weak and gone on. So the, the real question is okay, so is this properly put in? Are the piles in there to anchor it into the ground so that it actually stays in the position? The real question. I don't know. It's now been a big failure. Um, I mean, it could be worse. 
these things could be worse. I mean, you know, how much fails? I mean, if it was raining at the moment, more than it's been raining. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have 10 times as much rain. You, you could have had this whole slope come, come down. down. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and depending on whether that is anchored in properly, you don't know whether this thing can actually move again. So I, I think the question is, you know, how is this anchored? Is this anchored in? I don't know. I don't think we'll be able to see it, but... Uh, and there's obviously, you know, there's a lot of scaffolding, but we don't know whether that's anchored in or, or not. Is, is, are the piles on the bottom of it? That will be the question. Uh, I will ask that question, are the piles on it? So we are on limestone. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as we drive out, we can see that. Okay. But we are on limestone, and then we come across the fault, and we've gone into the Grand Dyer. Okay. Granite? Uh, yeah, it's a granite. A granite-like okay. granite -like thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and the reason we've got this big escarpment here, this, this uh, you know, the, the, the Jack's Hill escarpment, mm -hmm. the hillside, is because this side is going up relative to Kingston. Okay. So that's the flat area down in Kingston. And we are on the big Wagwater fault zone through here, and this is being uplifted. Okay. okay, and there's multiple forts. So there's one at the base of the slope, one separates the limestone from the granitoid, mm -hmm. and then there's one more or less on the top which separates the granitoid from a series of conglomerates. Okay. So there's a lot of faults in this area. We sort of think about faults as a single fault line. It's not right. Okay. <laughs> they, they're often multiple faults across a zone. Mm -hmm. And this is about one and a half kilometers, two and a half kilometers wide, a zone of faults. Okay. So the rocks inside so that... So we're standing... We're, 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 essentially right now we're standing in a zone of faults. We're standing in a zone of faults. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the white limestone. So this is on this side of that little fault. Mm -hmm. um, so, so on that side... The granite diorite has been thrust up, maybe faulted up, maybe a kilometre. And then somewhere at the bottom of the slope, this stuff's gone up maybe a kilometre to two kilometres. And then at the top, things have gone up eight or so kilometres. That's a lot of movement. That's why we're in a very dynamic area. area right. Yeah, we really are a dynamic country <laughs> in terms of faults. So what you can see in here is now you can see white limestone. Okay, so this is the white limestone, mm -hmm. and and it, it it goes on. It's offset by little faults as well, but there's a big fault behind it, which brings the the granitoids up. Okay. And this is relatively stable to build on. Okay, you don't need the retaining walls on this mm -hmm. to the same extent, although some of it's fractured. Uh, it's not as you can see it broken up into bits, but it, it's more stable. You can see it, it holds a, a good vertical side to it, whereas that stuff doesn't. So, so you immediately come along and you're actually seeing a different rock type, and that different rock type is significantly better to build on than the one, than the one over there. Yep. You have big rainfalls. All of this could come down. Mm -hmm. Because what happens rainfall. is the rain gets into it, <coughs> loads it, as soon as it loading over um, reaches a certain capacity, uh, overloads the ability for the slope to stay stable mm -hmm. and it comes down. And that is, that is where you end up then with a big serious set of problems. So, so this is, you know, this is not, um, not, a, not a great way of doing anything, basically. Um, and if you just look at it, it doesn't look like nice rock. Okay, it looks like horrible mess. Dirt, okay, dirt. dirt. But but what you'll see is that there are bits that aren't so bad. So this, you know, this this looks. Yeah, you know, that's the granite diorite. Okay, and you can see. What's, what's this? So this is the granite diorite. This is the granitoid. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you you can actually see the structure in that. So you can see that that has got, that's got the sort of um, crystals in it that you'd expect for a, 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 a plutonic igneous rock. So this is intruded into the ground. Mm -hmm. This is what this does. But what this is, this is a little bit within the larger area. Mm -hmm. And most of this is being 
The faults have cut it up. Water's got in there, broken it down, and most of this is clay. Okay. So what you have is you have these little, little areas where you get sort of relatively fresh stuff. And then what you have is you have very, very weathered zones. And those weathered zones will fail. Mm -hmm. So what, so it, when this sort of thing fails, what you end up with is, you, I mean, in this sort of case, you, you're just seeing streams of material come off. But you, you could end up with, um, what, what, with listric faults so, or listric failures. So that mm -hmm. basically you, you get, a, they get a curve that comes under and this whole thing comes down off this. Okay. And that would actually happen. Um, you don't want, in this sort of material, you don't want something that high. Okay, if you've got something that high, it's got to be a retaining wall in there. Right. Got to be a retaining wall. Uh, if we get very heavy rain, all of that's going to come down. That's going to block this road again. <laughs> it's going to destroy this road. Um, um, I mean, it's not going to go further because it's going to get blocked up against this wall, this wall but, mm -hmm. but it will actually block this road. Okay. So what we would end up with is a failure coming off and that will block oh. the road. Okay. Um, and and all of this so is... Right now, they, right now basically they're not, they're not out of the woods yet in terms of... Um, no. No, no, no. I, no, I mean, the... what, are, what are they trying to... What are they doing here? I mean, they, you can see they've been ripping that. Okay, they can see the marks on that. They've been ripping mm -hmm. this material off. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they, they've ripped this back and they're now making a very, very steep slope. Now there's no, there's, that is not necessarily stable because you can see there are zones in there and you can see it in here. You can see that area there? Mm -hmm. That's a much more weathered zone. So that material's more clay. That's probably where one of the little forts has gone through and, and changed that so that, so they, that, that these things change to clays and, and those are soft. Okay. And so, th so the, the area has a problem because it's unstable. So, so what you've got to look at, and, and you can see that there's a, you know, you can see on the top here, there's, there's a, there, you know, there, that is the, that's the soil level. Mm -hmm. So that's the soil, that will wash off. But then you've got the regolith, and the regolith is some weathered rocks. Okay. And the trouble in these areas is the weathered rocks can go down really deep. Um, 30, 40, 50 meters. Okay. Weathered rocks. Weathered rocks, and which means that they will fail. I mean, they're not, they're not hard like that. They're wet, they're soft, and, and they, they will basically... Clay-like. Clay-like, okay. yeah, turned into clays. What you've actually got here is this is just... Okay, this is, this is just weathered ground iron. It's so weathered, it, it's just like a soil. Okay. Okay, so... There's no, there's absolutely nothing in that that can hold anything up. Okay. So, you know, it once was, it was once like that, but this bit's out of soil. Okay. And the problem is, you can't predict where it's going to be, the different bits of it like that. Mm -hmm. So some of it can be solid, some of, it. some of it will be really, really weak like this. So you're going to try and put an access road up here. That's going to be difficult. So what could, what could they have done prior? I think they have to think about where they put access roads into these sort of things. So in other words, where would you put an access road? Why are you cutting this back? How are you going to put an access road up in here when you've got this material? It's not going to be very easy. Okay. This material is extremely weathered. Um, <laughs> it's going to be problematic. It's going to fail. Um, the only way you can put an access road in here is, is to have two, basically, walls that are going to go up on either side of it one to prevent the material coming down mm -hmm. and one to prevent the access road collapsing mm -hmm. so that's the only way you can actually do anything um in what they've done here ripping it i have no idea what they do <laughs> to my mind it, it doesn't make any sense okay. but but the re reality is that what you're doing here is you've, you've got very different rocks you've got wet extremely weathered rocks you've got less weathered rocks and you're going through that, and there's no predictability of where those are. Okay, understood. And therefore, in terms of how you actually design these things, you've actually got to understand that. And, I mean, engineers can do it. It's just a question of does, how do I put it, does, the, um, does that fall within the money you've allocated to do these sort no. of things? Right. I think that's really the, where the question is coming.
comes out of the money. It comes out of the money. That is, I think, the big thing. So in other words, if you're going to put something here, you can put something here. But, but equally, you see, this stuff's soft. So it's so soft. Mm -hmm. When you think about foundations for houses in here, or buildings of any description, you've got to think about what you're building them on mm -hmm. and, and how, how safe that would be. So in other words, if you load a slope, can that slope fail just because it gets wet? Okay. Uh, and even worse, if we get a small earthquake or even a large earthquake, mm -hmm. what, is, what is likely to happen when you actually see these sorts of things? Okay. And so I think the key thing about this is really looking at these, these areas and sort of saying, look, these are problematic. Um, you can build on them, but if you're going to build on them, it's going to cost you much more money. Okay. Because you've got to build safely. And if you don't build safely, somebody going to come back. And they're going to be after you. <laughs> that would be the reality as far as I see. <laughs>